All right, let me share my screen, guys. So what I'm going to do today is show you a PowerPoint I prepared and then go through the online calculators and all that also. So move this away. All right, so I'm going to get started. Uh, first of all, you did a right decision to join this call. I'm 100% sure. You guys really want to plan for your kids' education, and this is why we are all gathered here. Uh, I am not a certified financial planner, but I have many, many years of financial knowledge and experience. Um, the disclaimer basically is, you know, this is to help you get started and then take decisions, but you need to do your own due diligence, right? And if you want to consult a professional financial expert, feel free to do so. But honestly, this is not a rocket science. So you can research also after you go through this session, it's pretty straightforward. Government has set up this funds um, very well so that it helps your kids, right? So let's get started. All right, so what are we gonna cover today? Right. So, what are the current college expenses? If you guys can mute, that'd be great. College expenses, and let's take an example of UT Dallas expense example. Uh, and then, how is the inflation impacting college expenses? So, let's then we'll do the four year rough math with UT Dallas college. And it could be UT Austin also, right? Or Texas AM. Um, so then the bottom line is, what do we need? How much money you need to target for the education? And then once we know that, what options are government offering us? Tax advantaged options, right? So there are special programs that the government has designed for us just for the education purpose. So we're going to go through that. We'll go through the details of those plans and options. We'll look at how US is doing overall. And then we'll also crunch some numbers and finally the conclusion. You can ask me a question while the session is going on, but I suggest let's wait. Um, many slides will automatically answer all the questions, but I'm there to help you guys. So you can interrupt me. All right, so let's look at the current university expenses. And we're going to take the example of four-year bachelor's degree in the University of Texas at Dallas. The tuition cost per year is $16,000. So if you had to send your kid today, you had to set aside $16,000 for this year's college tuition. Room and board is different which has come anywhere from 11 to 12,000. And this is a very conservative number. Imagine your kid spending $1,000 every month on food uh, off campus apartment, sharing with two, three students. 1,000 may not be enough, who knows? But let's say 11,000 to 12,000 a year, that's the cost. So we are looking at $27,000 per year for one year of bachelor's. So this is just a rough estimate. And again, it depends on the number of credits, how big is the program, how the, your kid is living, the lifestyle. He wants to have his own separate room, separate apartment, then the price is going to go up. Some parents, you know, what they do is they'll send their kids to community college for two years and then transfer the credits to university. That's one way to save that education expense. Or if your kid wants to become a doctor or go to Ivy League universities, it will be much more expensive than this. So, but I'm looking at a typical four-year college degree in a decent university like UT at Dallas, or even at UT at Austin, or Texas a and or IC University. All right, so this is today's numbers, actuals. These are actuals. And you can also search this. Go to the U UT Dallas website. I have a link here on the top. So this is what I did. I said it's for this year, 
first time I'm doing for undergraduate for a school in technology, arts, emerging communication, whatever. I'm going to be a full-time student. I'm a Texas resident and I'm going to stay outside to save some money. And then I click the submit and you get this answers. So for the fall semester, the tuition could be anywhere from 7,700 to 8,681. The so fall is a full semester and then the spring is also same price. The room and meals is about 6, 000, almost 6,000, the books and transportation may or may not apply, but roughly it comes out. So if I take an average, it's a $8,000 tuition per semester and you know 6000 to eat so 14000 is right there this is per semester 14 times 2 28 right cuz you will have your kid will go through two full semesters in a year and probably work in summer that's usually the formula right so this is actually ut dallas number now there is also a thing called inflation we all know that so in last 20 years, uh, almost three times the college fees have tripled. Average is 9% a year. That 20, that 26 or 27,000 will calculate it. It's gonna go up every year like this. This is last 30, 40, what, 50 years of data. Now in last two years, after the Corona, after we got hit by the Corona, the tuition inflation kind of reduced one to two percent, so it wasn't nine percent. But but that's because people were not enrolling and all that kind of stuff. So, but on an average, anywhere from I've heard several numbers, and this is a good website. We've got the number. They have historical data. Anywhere from seven to nine percent is normal in U.S. I myself studied masters here in U.S. So that's that. And so now let's look at the actual math year by year for UT Dallas, right? So tuition increases, say, let's say 8% per year. And your food and room increases 2.5% per year. So that's the regular inflation. I know right now it's almost 8%, but this is unusual. The US average over many years is 2.5%. So let's say in the first year, your cost is 16,000 per tuition, two full semesters, and the kid is gonna eat and all that too. So 11,000 more, so 27,000. The next year, we're gonna apply this inflation. Now it increased to 28,555. And then the third year is 30,000. And the fourth year is 32,000. The total is $117,000. This is a cash outflow. This is what you need for a kid, your kid to do four-year college uh, in UT Dallas. That is today's number. That means your kid is 18 now. So I know it's a pretty big number, right? So you have to at least target your goal should be 100,000 for one kid. If you have two kids, then of course, 200,000. And if your kid goes to Ivy League, which is excellent or med school, you will need more money. Those schools are expensive, but they are worth it maybe. So think about it. How old is your kid? How many years do you have? till the kid is going to go to college. And that this time period is where we have to invest in all these plans and do the compounding. Your decision to join this call is very important because you are now realize the importance of time. Investment always needs long time horizon. All right, so now what are the options? So the one is the 529 college saving plan where there's no limit actually. You can put as much as you want, but there's a gift tax that applies at a certain point. So you to be aware of that and I'll explain you. There's a Coverdell education savings account 
which is nothing but like a Roth IRA. They allow you to put $2,000 every year and you can use that towards education. Uh, there won't be tax or penalty as long as it is used for education. And of course, bank savings. And then the fourth one, which I don't recommend is Roth IRA. You can, you have an option to use Roth IRA amount for education. But remember, retirement itself is another project. So you don't want to mess up that project. I would not use Roth IRA. So in other words, the first two options, the 529 and Coverdale are recommended. They are specifically designed by government for education purposes. Any gains you make, they won't tax you as long as you use it for education. So let's look at now 529 plan. What is 529 plan? It's a tax advantage account for your kids' education expenses. And you can use for college expense, kindergarten to 12th grade, tuition also, certain apprenticeship costs, and even student loan repayments. So simply speaking, it's nothing but after-tax investment plan with gains, not tax, as long as you guys use it for your kids' education, qualified education expenses. So anyone can contribute. So you as a parent will start, but you know your brother, sister, grandparents, they all can contribute. They can help your kid. And you, the account can also change the beneficiary. You're, you have so much money that you're going to switch to your younger kid, for example. Uh, there's no income, income requirement, so it doesn't matter how much your income is. And then there are no taxes as long as you use it for qualified educational expenses. So what are those qualified educational expenses? I'll explain you. Down the road, I'll explain you. So there are two, within 529, there are two plans, two types of plans, two types of 529. So one is the standard 529 college saving plan, for example, Vanguard 529 or even Texas has a 529 plan. So many other states have 529 too. And it's nothing but it's similar to an investment account like 401k. It's not pre-tax, it's after tax. 529 is after tax. It can be used for any college in US, any participating college in US. And most, most of the colleges in US support 529 uh, plan. So the college saving plan is applies to any colleges in US participating college. There is no limit on contributions, but $16,000 per kid per parent is the limit. If you put 18,000, then they will tax you on that extra 2,000. All right, so qualified educational expenses are covered. And then the second type is prepaid tuition plan, which in, in our case, in Texas, it's Texas Promise Fund, where you prepay four-year college tuition in your state, or it could be sometimes, some states, it only also applies to specific colleges. And you lock in today's rate. So that UT Dallas, that whatever that number was coming out, 16,000, you can lock in today's rate. If Even if your kid is going after 10 years, he or she will get today's rate. That's a plus. You have to be Texas resident. And in terms of paying payment to the plan, it's very flexible. It could be like a car payment, yearly payment, lump sum, and so on. All right. So the next is, so in 529, there are two types. The next is Coverdell ESA. Education Savings Account. This is quite similar to 529. Uh, you put the money in, it grows, and you use it for education. Uh, there is an income limit. So 220000 for two people work, earning in the house or 110 k for single filers. And maximum you can contribute is 2000 a year. Um, so it can be, basically, you can have a beneficiary under age 18. You can continue putting 2,000 till the kid turns 18. And then whatever you accumulated in the account, 
needs to be fully utilized by the age 30. So the education account uh, amount needs to be fully consumed by age 30. You can even transfer. I mean, if you think you have so much remaining, you can transfer, you can even uh, roll it over to another uh, plan, even 529 plan. So um, that you can do it and avoid the tax penalty. So it's pretty flexible plan. The only thing I notice is only $2,000 a year, pretty small amount, considering we need 100,000 plus. All right. And then the fourth option is Roth IRA. I will not touch this no matter what. The retirement itself is a big emergency at our end. These days, things are expensive. But you can use it if you need to. You can use it and uh, they won't tax you. Uh, well, they won't penalize you before 59 and a half if used for education purpose. But some taxes may apply. So, but again, as I said, uh, we uh, there are two projects going on: education project and retirement. I will not touch the retirement program. All right. So now we're going to go in depth. As I said, there are two types of 529 plan: prepaid and the college savings plan. We will go in depth with the prepaid tuition plan. And so since we are in Texas, the Texas is a Texas Tuition Promise Fund. You guys can jot down this URL, texastuitionpromisefund.com. And it's nothing but basically uh, it, you're paying the tuition at today's rate for four-year college. It excludes medical and dental institutions. But there are some... Uh, ways to transfer, but mostly it's for four-year college, excluding medical and dental institution. And plus, also it cannot be used for graduate program. If your kid is gonna do masters, and if you have extra money remaining, or if you have so many tuition units remaining, you cannot transfer for graduate program. But there are many ways to convert and all that, but they're trying to discourage everyone. They're saying this is for a four-year bachelor's degree non-medical, non-dental. And the way the, the these guys do it is the, you basically buy tuition units. So the calibration unit is tuition unit. You buy tuition units and tuition units will pay your college. So and roughly you buy 100 tuition units. 100 tuition units maps to 30 sorry, 30 semester hours, which is one full year of education, college education, or 30 credits, tuition credits. So you buy 100 units, you're buying one year of college, right? So uh, graphically, this is how it's gonna look. You need 100 first year, second year, third year, fourth year, total you have, four, you, have you need to buy 400 tuition units. And this is just a rough ballpark because the, the the number of tuition units will vary depending on the program. You know, arts degree may need less, engineering degree may need more. So this is a rough ballpark, roughly 400 tuition units that maps to 120 college credits, right? So the tuition cost varies. Uh, you know, UT Dallas could be expensive than um, say, uh, some San Antonio University, I don't know. There's one, but I'm just saying, uh, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science in UT Dallas may have 130 credits, whereas some other university in Texas may have only 120 credits. So it will vary a little bit. All right, so now tuition units, there are three types of tuition units. Type one, which is for most expensive four-year college. So if you are going to a four expensive four-year college in Texas, then you are recommended to get type one type of tuition units. Then the second one is type two, which is four-year average cost colleges. And the type three is for public school, two-year public school. You know, it could be associate degree, that kind of stuff. So what are the prices of or cost of those tuition unit types. So today, 
So the enrollment was since last September till today. This is this is that enrollment's price: one hundred and sixty-four for type one, one hundred and twelve for type two, and twenty-nine dollars for type three. Right. So if you buy a hundred, hundred. So in my case, I bought type two. So if I bought hundred, now I'm looking about eleven thousand two hundred fifty-nine dollars for one year of college today. All right. So the enrollment is closed right now. But if you have a new baby this year, then it's open till July 31st. Now this is where timing is important. You guys join. So for general audience, um, kids above one year or one or above one, they can sign up for September 1st. And this numbers will change. The type one, type two cost will change. Probably increase. But if you have a new baby, this is perfect time. You can still uh, use these old numbers. All right, so let's look at the cost roughly. So this is, again, this is 2021 to 22. So University of Dallas at Texas fixed tuition plan 2021 is $16,412 for one year. So the, the right columns, these guys are saying, you need to buy 100 type 1s or 145 type 2s or 560 the type 3s. Whichever one you decide to buy, type 1, 2, or 3, these many counts, these many you need to purchase for this many years. And this is just a screenshot of a, such a long list of colleges we have. This is just to give you an idea. So payment plans, how do you pay for this prepaid tuition? So you can do lump sum, you can do installment, you can do uh, the payment frequency could be five years, 10 years, or pay as you go, as soon as you got a bonus, you're gonna pay that kind of stuff too. But think from the investment point, they want maximum money now so that they themselves will grow, right? So the cheapest with the lump sum plan, as soon as the payment plan comes, five-year plan, that means you're paying every month for five years. The, they don't get enough years to grow your money. So they'll bump up the price. Price per tuition unit will go up. So there's a PDF Excel. Uh, there's a PDF on their website. And you can see that if you go with a five year, 10 year plan, then your per tuition cost will be this much per tuition units. If you buy a lump sum, then this is your fixed amount. So in my case, before, eight years or so, I bought for 34,000 lump sum, four year college prepaid, any college in Texas, type two, just an example, all right? So, and you can also play with the calculator and uh, we will play here too. So this is, a, this is a high level process. You first decide type one, type two or type two, pick one. Then you decide how many tuition units you need. So you do that calculator. You see, you take an example. Okay, my son is gonna go to education college in say UT Austin and in this major, and uh, the calculator will tell you, okay, you need 432 type two units. So then you know the numbers now, you know the cost. Then you come up with the payment plan. Then you sign up and start and start paying the payments. If it's a five year, of course you have to wait till five years. Lump sum, it's a one-time payment. And then when your kid is ready, uh, he or she can use the tuition units. So the, it's pretty straightforward process. You get an online portal login and you'll get to see all these things. It's more like a contract. You are signing a contract with the state. And uh, this is a, guaranteed uh, tuition prepaid. Now there are questions they have in about a section on the website, they'll say, well, we are not guaranteed by the law, but Texas law is guaranteeing it. So there are no issues with that. I don't see any issues. All right, the Comptroller's uh, Office of Texas, they are all managing this program. So it's not like a third party vendor. They do use a vendor to manage the finance and the website and all that stuff. 
So you will have all these questions. What if my kid goes to medical or dental or out of state? So you pay the money here and the kid wants to study in Arizona or Georgia, then what? Then there are ways you can transfer the value. Uh, they call it transfer value and it's all there on the website, you know. So um, all these questions are coming from their website and they have answers there too. Right, so this is the URL. Now let's look at the calculator. So I want to create a example of how we're gonna check the cost. So, so see, this is okay. So I went. This is the frequently asked question, and they are saying um, there was a guarantee question. There you go. Is the tax institution promise fund guaranteed by the state of Texas? So it's not constitutionally guaranteed, but Texas law requires to accept the institution permits as payment. So it is a Texas law. And then when I clicked at this link, it took me to this, the comptroller's comptro office. So the Texas state offers this many programs. Hey, um, sorry to disturb. Um, yeah. I see only your PowerPoint. I don't see the other screen. Yeah. Oh, because I'm not sharing across. Maybe I should share the whole screen. I'm so sorry. All right. Let me know if you can see it. Yes, now we see. All right. So I'm going to go back. So this is a frequently asked questions section on the Texas State uh, Promise. See the URL here? I'm in the FAQ. And then there is a question on the guarantee. There's a sub link there. So let's go there. So while the, is the Texas tuition promise fund guaranteed by the state of Texas? While the Texas tuition promise fund is not constitutional guaranteed, Texas law requires all Texas two year and four year colleges to accept Texas tuition promise fund tuition units as payment for the tuition. So no need to worry. And then if you click the, how did they come up with this plan and all that, I think this link, if I click this link, it takes you to the comptroller's office. And so whatever is program that Texas offering, so like Texas guaranteed tuition plan, this was an old plan. Right, many years back. It's now close to the enrollment, new enrollment. This is the new one. This is what we are focusing on. It's open for enrollment. And then there, this is Tyler, Texas College Savings. It's a 529 of Texas. And there's a Lone Star 529. And then there is, this is for the disabled kids. So this is all coming from, what I'm trying to show here is this is all managed by the Texas government. This is not a Changu Mango program, all right. <laughs> so that's that. And now our goal is to go into the calculator. So tips and tools, tuition planning calculator. And it's asking for the name of the kid. So I'm gonna say, Bart Simpson. And Bart was born on say 2010. And let's say I'm going to pick type two because this is average college cost. This is highly expensive college cost. And this is like a community college. I just want to see there are people good, there are a lot of people nice. All right. So let's pick this. Go next. And let's say I'm going to do lump sum. Next, and I'm going to go with four year college. And um, I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to pick a university in Texas that is very likely our kids will go there. So let's go 
University of Texas. <clears throat> Let's say I'll pick uh, UT uh, Business College of UT at Arlington College of Business. And let's see the cost. So here, I'm saying I'm gonna buy 50 type two tuition units, right? So I'm gonna bump it up to 400. Remember, we are gonna do 400 for each year. So move this slider to 400 and see how it goes. So at 400 type two, okay, for this UT Arlington College of Business, the kid is studying a BBA or business administration. Total cost is $57,000. That's a tuition, only tuition. Mm -hmm. And with 400 type two, we are having a deficit of 112 units. Basically they are saying buy more because it's an expensive school. So let's say if I buy 550, then I'm fine, right? So, and then they have at the bottom, the weighted average. So they're seeing on an average in Texas, four-year college is 45,000. So, but compared to average, this particular college is super expensive, right? So you can add more, you can add, uh, you can add, uh, let's add uh, Texas a and scroll. Okay, Texas a and college uh, engineering. Let's see how that looks. Uh, that's equally expensive, 57,000, right? So say I'll buy 450 credits. That's what I did in my case, 450 tuition units type two. So the deficit is $7,000 over four years, over four years. Maybe you can manage from your savings account. There's maybe one, one year's bonus, right? So you can buy this. So this is telling me buy 450 units of type two, and this money is equivalent to paying this to colleges. This money is enough to fund this. There's a small deficit here, which I'm gonna manage, or I'll buy 500 credits, 500 tuition units, right? Okay, so that's, that's the example. So you wanna do installments, five annual installments. So 57,000, remember 57,000 is the cost. Now let's do five annual investments. And it doesn't do dynamically. Oh, right here at the bottom. See here, five investments, each annual payment of 12,000. So you're paying 63. Right? So it's more than 50 cents because, well, they're getting less time to grow your money. So each year you're putting 12,000 for five years, right? So you got the idea and you can play around with this. Can you do even uh, like a car payment, 60 payments? Each month you are paying $1,000. Total cost is 64,000. That if you have cash in your bank, either you can pay 57,000 or do this way, right? That, that's your decision. So someone will say, I might as well put it in stock market, this, that. No, there is a tax advantage here and you're investing in a peace of mind. This is guaranteed, right? Stock market could be gamble. So, so you can do all that, play around with those options on the website. All right, so that was prepaid. So we have two types of 529, we discussed prepaid. Now we are going the regular 529 college savings plan. All right, so how is this plan? What is this plan? So this plan is nothing but after-tax investments in mutual funds, stocks, bonds, blend, blend funds. In a 529 account, we will not be taxed on the gain as long as we use it towards qualified education expenses. So the previous plan was only tuition. That 57,000 will only go towards tuition. This one can go towards any college in the US, participating college in the US. Uh, you can even pay for a kindergarten 12th grade, the robotics $400 bill, you can use 529, right? Or you wanna pay the loan amount, 
loan repayments. So what are those qualified expenses, right? So the prepaid was only focusing here, the tuition. This 529 and college saving plan will pay for the lodging, boarding. So boarding includes food. Books are expensive, it covers books. Your kid buys a laptop, it's covered. He has a loan, he can pay that, right? So this plan covers a wider spectrum of expenses, college expenses. If your kid goes to off-campus, then the off-campus uh, room and board cannot be much higher than the suggested uh, numbers from college as a rule. So, you know, if your monthly expenses in college dorm is $1,000, you cannot have an off-campus $2,000 apartment. Uh, 529 will only pay for 1000 for an example. And if you have a scholarship, all that, then you have to basically, you know, if, if you have $10,000 tuition cost and if your scholarship, you got 2000 then 529 can only use $8,000 to, to pay that deficit. So it's pretty straightforward. So 529 is any school in US for this many expenses, right? Contribution, how do you contribute to 529? So here's the thing. You can save up to $16,000 per parent in a 529 account. So this could be say Vanguard account. You opened up a 529 Vanguard. Then, and I have said two kids. And my wife and myself, we both are working. So I can put 16,000 on kid one. My wife can put 16,000 on kid one. So we both can put 32,000 per kid, right? And then for my second kid also, I can do that. But anything above 16,000 per parent per kid will be considered gift tax, gift, and you'll be taxed. So don't cross the limits and Vanguard guys, and they're pretty good. They'll explain you, do not do more than this. This year's limit is 16,000. When I did it, so I have prepaid tuition plan for the fixed tuition. I have one kid and I have this plan also for the living expenses, room and board. This one, during my time, it was 15,000 limits, right? So now it's 16,000. All right, somebody's chatting, texting. Uh, no, not required. Uh, I, I would suggest call a Vanguard and ask them, but there's a, like a married filing jointly and single filers and that kind of stuff. So, but at least you'll be able to put 16,000, you know. Vanguard guys are pretty good, they'll explain you. At a high level, I'm telling you, you can put 32,000 if both are working or at least 16,000. All right, let's go next. Uh, as I said, gift tax may apply if you do more than 16. And the other thing with the Vanguard, with the contribution uh, part is anyone can contribute, you know, grandparents, brother, sister, aunts, uncles, friends, even your friends can help your kid. So, um, and even a stranger, you don't have to be a family member. A stranger can give money. All right, so the next question, this is a very standard question. By having so much money in 529, will it, will it impact my financial aid? So if parents open up a 529, then it's considered parents' assets, it's parents' money. And the government is saying uh, there will be very small influence on the federal financial aid decision. So I think roughly 5%, they have a formula. And in that, the 529 plays only 5% impact. So no need to worry. But if a kid has its own uh, uh, accounts like UGMA or UTMA, then that will have an impact on the federal financial eligibility. And the other thing is, say if grandparents, if our grandparents wants to help our kid, but if the account is under their name, then, um, the child is getting a benefit from grandparent from another account, and that will be considered uh, as a extra assets that the kid is getting. 
and that will highly impact your financial aid decision. So in other words, funnel the money through your parents for your kid's education. If grandparents wants to help, tell them to give it to you, to you and then you put it in yours. Uh, I don't know. Good question. I don't think so. I doubt that. You can convert into dollars and put it. So, all right. So that's that. So the example is Vanguard 529, right? So you open the account first. And well, you can ask the guy on the phone. He's very helpful. So it's not only Vanguard. I like Vanguard. I am a Vanguard guy. Vanguard is very safe. I like Vanguard funds. So Vanguard, it could be Texas College Savings Plan. It's a Texas states 529 plan. Fidelity also does that. Utah does that. So many states do that. Those 529s will pay for your kids' education anywhere in the US. All right? So no need to worry. And for those qualified expenses. I like Vanguard because I already have a brokerage account. It's easy to manage. And plus their fund, funds are awesome. So many funds. All right. So you open up, then you start start contribute, then you pick the investments, pick the mutual funds, depending on, you know, horizon, how, how, many, how many years you have. If you have 10 plus years to play, then I would go a little bit aggressive. If you have only two, four or five years remaining, that would go moderate. Let me see, someone has a question. You can invest in uh, any other state's program. Yeah, 529, you can do that. Yeah, T. Rowe Price, there are so many. So, uh, all right, Virginia has it too, 529. So then the next thing is you now pay every year or every month, they repeat the contributions, and then you can use 529 to pay those qualified expenses. So in this case, college tuition fees, room board, books, computer, for any college in the US that accepts 529 and most of the colleges do. All right, so now you're contributing over 10 years, five years. So any gains that you get will not be taxed. Then this is a big plus with Vanguard, with 529 plan. Use that money for education, that extra. So you may put $40,000 in the money grows to 60, 70,000. So 30,000 gains will not be taxed and can use towards college expense. All right, so now the next question could be how many 529s I need to set up. So usually you can have one 529 for both the kids. Um, but what people recommend is do separate because one kid has only five years remaining till he goes to college. Other one may have 10 years. So your investment strategies could differ. One is aggressive and one is moderate. So that's why I would suggest have separate plans. And you are investing in aggressive mutual funds in the first one and moderate in the second one. You have those options, right? But you do have option in 529 is very flexible plan. You do have option to change beneficiaries or you can even roll over to another plan. So they're very flexible. Only difference with this is now you are managing the growth of the money, whereas prepaid is peace of mind. It's guaranteed. All right, so let's do some math with college savings. Now you guys remember what was the requirement, 100,000, right? For the UTD Dallas. So remember that. And this is an Excel uh, simple formulas, Excel formulas, this is my calculator. So let's say both husband and wife, a mom and dad put $32,000 and they pick a fund which is similar to S&P 500 on an average nine years. And you decide you're not gonna put anything on a yearly, just one lump sum, one big payment. And you get $63,000 when the kid is 18 years old. So he's right now 10 years old, he's got eight years to go. In eight years, the money grew to 63,000. Then in the first year, we withdraw 26,000. But remember, the money is still invested. So it's going to grow 9%. So 
So this is 63 minus 26, then whatever is remaining increases by 9%. So it's 37 now. Next year, 14,000 is the gap. Now you are in debt. So third year, the, the guy doesn't have money, kid doesn't have money, last two years. So let's say I'm gonna increase, I'm gonna put every year $2,000. So I put 32,000 one lump sum when I started the account in Vanguard. And then every year for eight years, I'm putting $2,000. Now the deficit is 11,000. So I'm gonna say, let's say uh, 3,000. Now you have a surplus of 32. So roughly look, you did gain 96,000, almost 100,000. And you are still gaining for four years, 9%. So your total cost is actually 107. 107,000 is the cash outflow, right? So now here, the withdrawal, this is the money your kid is withdrawing every year for tuition, board, room, everything. This is your like Vanguard 529. Next year is 27, third year it could be 28,000, inflation, remember? And then this could be 30,000. Still, it's not bad is there, it's $849 debt is nothing, right? So you can play around with this calculator and get an idea. The outcome of this analysis is how much do I put a lump sum and what is my yearly contribution with the assumption that you're gonna pick the funds that give you 9% every year, right? This cannot be predicted, but roughly, 9% S&P average, you need it, right? You put in bonds, you're not gonna grow, right? So that, that's the math. And I have, um, I can share this Excel, it's not a problem. So continuing this, so where was I? Okay, so now let's look at the statistics. How are Americans doing, right? So their goal is they want $57,000 saved for college, on an average, they think 50,000. Not everyone goes to UT, right? People will go to, there are many cheaper schools in the US costing much less, right? So on an average, and then some of them go to community college and then transfer credit. So on an average, they're looking at 57,000. They saved in 2020, they saved 5,000 for their kids, probably multiple kids, total 55,000. And if you see the pie chart here, maximum savings Americans are saving in 529. Maximum is in 529. So the prepaid to your state is only 8%, right? So on an average, the number is 30,000 in their accounts. And the American have 30,000 saved for their kids in 529 as of today or as of 2020, right? That's the stats. So, Let's conclude here, um, what options we have. So one option is you buy the peace of mind, get that prepaid tuition done. Your kid will, you will have extra money, this, that you'll save in West and you'll pay for the room and board, you know, or the kid will work part time and live or stay with you. But at least the tuition is paid off. That's a peace of mind. Second is go with the 529, put 32,000, keep on putting two, 3,000 every month, every year, or 500 every month, people do that. And he has a flexibility to go anywhere in US, right? And if you have extra money remaining, it can be rolled over to the, for even the graduate studies or to the next kid, right? This is you growing the money this is guaranteed prepaid. And this is what I did, combo option, which is I paid the tuition plan fully. And I set up a Vanguard 529 for room and board. That's it. I put 34,000 in the prepaid tuition. During my time, it was cheaper. And I put 30,000 in Vanguard. 30,000 in Vanguard became 50,000 in eight years. So you can do that. Remember, whatever you do, you have to do it right away because money needs time to grow. In September, the tuition will go up. 
possibly 9%, more than 9%, because last two years, the inflation was 1% or 2% because of Corona. They didn't bump it up that much. But this year, they tried to catch up. So September 1st, if you go to the prepaid website, it will go up. And they're not, they not doing anything more extra. They're simply using the numbers from colleges in coming up with tuition units. All right. So you need to start early. Here's the example. Look at this. So if you had a new baby this year, if you put 32,000, it would grow to 150K in 18 years. 18 years. If it's three years old, 116. Five, 98. You got the idea. If it's 12 years old, kid, if you put just one lump sum, 32,000 today, 53,000 at age 18 in six years. Right? Again, the assumption is 9% growth. But yes, it is recommended to start early, but if you're a little bit behind, you can contribute big amounts every year. What I'm saying is put 32,000 and that project is done, then focus on retirement. That, that's my strategy. But if you're late, you can still contribute each year. Somebody has a question. Yeah, you can you can add. Um, how do we select the state? Um, I didn't understand that question. How do we select the state? So there are so many state five twenty nine. It doesn't matter. Utah is good. People buy. People pick pick five twenty nine based on how good are the investment options. That should be your goal. You know. So can we add money? Yeah, yeah. You can add. Well, you can add money. There are some rules uh, with the prepaid. There is a rule that you have to have three year gap. So some of your guys, if you're a kid in high school, it may not be eligible for prepaid because they don't have enough time to grow the money. But uh, you can add money in 520. And I think you can add money in the regular fight in the college savings plan. All right, so you need to start early. <laughs> And uh, if you are late, if you think you are late, then you can contribute big amounts each year. I showed you that Excel calculator, same thing. And then, so for example, in this case, if your kid is say 10 year old, he has eight years to go, you put 32K now, and then 3,300 each year, which is less than $300 a month till 18. And you'll be fine, you'll be fine it will accrue to 100K. Again, the assumption is you're growing at 9%. All right. So, so this is a big picture. This is, you need to start research and take decision. The enrollment starts in September 1st with a prepaid plan. 529, there's no enrollment time or anything. You can sign up any day. Pick up the phone, call Vanguard, get started. You, I used the combo option, first invested in the peace of mind, pre prepaid tuition. You can do that too. And then later on, you can save money for a room and board. You know, just think this way. Can your kid live outside your house in 10 or 11,000 a year? It's difficult nowadays. He has to have two, three roommates, right? The food is so expensive. So, uh, what else? All right. So take advantage, tax advantage of 529. Don't think this way that I even, you are well off putting in stock market, this, that. You don't get a tax advantage. If you made $20,000 profit in a year, 20,000 is going to go through capital gains tax. So you lost money. And then you are investing for the college plan. So think this way, max, max out your 529. And then if still there is a deficit, then you can use from your brokerage account. But no Roth IRA, no traditional IRA, no 401k loans. That's the last resort because the retirement project is more expensive than this. Right? And the other thing is start brainstorming your kids to go in a, to do a decent major. Right? Mom and dad are working so hard, collecting $110,000. 
for the kids education the kid does in, in some major that has no income coming right people make that mistake so start brainstorming pick five careers good careers and then give him a flexibility to pick one so that he doesn't feel that is cornered he'll pick any one of them lawyer doctor computer science data science right accounting so on all right uh thank you and we're going to go take questions though just so you know i'm not trying to sell anything right this is just for community seva i do run a whatsapp group and that is also we have a guide with the retirement and all that if you want to join seven my number is there with my cell phone and i can add you to the whatsapp group add your name also that way i know 7346440928 again this is i i don't want anything i'm happy i'm actually happy to help others so all right let's go with questions guys hi namesh this is srihari again yes sir hey this is a great presentation namesh i really learned quite a lot um, in the last one hour thanks so much for that um so i have one question so mm -hmm. the pre uh, the prepaid plan right that yeah. is under the assumption that we'll be staying in the state of texas and the kid will be going to a school in state of texas yes uh, but if we are unsure how the time about living here in texas uh, mm -hmm. does the second option make sense uh, to go with so if you are not sure so first of all this this is a very common question what if my kid gets education outside or something i'll tell you one thing you as a parents would want your kid next to you you're not going to restrict but preference is your kid is around you mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so think this way many people when they had younger kids they always say well, what if i go to georgia what if i go to new york california they ended up staying here forever and then uh, now they are saying oh, i wish i had done that so so first uh, fix that second thing is your question was it goes to the transfer value clause which is <laughs> let me go to that and it's a little bit complicated but there is a thing called so, so here what if my kid so forget this what if my kid attends a private or out of state college or career what do i do So you're saying, and you already paid for the prepaid here, right? So you think, oh, you're gonna live here, and suddenly things changed because uh, your 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 kid's uh, friend went to New York, so you he wants to follow him. So there is a thing called transfer of value, transfer value. So what transfer value is? Say you put fifty thousand dollars to buy this tuition unit, and the fifty thousand in the investment in the account went to say sixty thousand. So you uh, what it's saying is you have to you can transfer only the smallest amount of those two one is what you contributed and one is what uh, your contribution plus the growth or the loss whichever is the smaller value you can transfer to new york that's what it's saying now there could be some tax implications which i don't see it anywhere here i can assume that there won't be any tax because it is one from one 529 to another but you will have to confirm uh, with the vanguard or that receiving uh, college right So, if you have a situation where you're not sure you're going to be in Texas, then uh, regular five twenty nine program is what yeah. I would suggest. Okay, sure. Yeah. And uh, another question now, um, Nimesh. Yeah. So, assuming, uh, for example, if there is an instance where we have to move back to India or some time ago, mm -hmm. and we have to stop enrollments and we have to take the money out, how are the how much do you think is the uh, penalties that we need to pay? Ten percent penalty. for the funds that are not used for education 10% so if you had $50000 there will be a penalty of 10% plus the tax on the gains so federal taxes ordinary taxes will apply so if your 50000 became 70000 through 529 or through through even the prepaid tuition mm -hmm. then $20000 will go through the capital gains tax ordinary tax and then uh, on top of that there will be a 10% penalty just like 401k right okay one final question from my side mm. so let's say if i am inclining towards the regular uh, 5 to 1 529 program mm. and i want to invest like $6000 at max annually 
should can, I have do I have the option to do it like a one lump sum of six thousand or should I distribute it across a few months? How does that work? Six thousand in a five twenty nine plan. Yeah. Ideally, sooner you pay, more the time horizon you get for the money to grow. Compounding needs time. So, if you have six thousand now, I would put six thousand now instead of mm -hmm. over two years. And uh, uh, six thousand I put, and can I stop doing that for the rest of the years, or should I should I do it like an annual commitment that every year I'm gonna pay or something? It depends on your kid's age, how many years the kid has till he becomes 18, he or she. So if you have a lot of time, put a big lump sum now and then put monthly payments or yearly payments. You know, okay. you, you have to do this math. You have to do this calculation. So if your kid is, say, 10 years, then I have eight years. So in this formula, I'm putting 32,000 now and then every year 3,000. Then mm -hmm. only I'm meeting the four-year college. Right. Makes sense. Wonderful. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Nimesh. Yeah. Hey, um, this is Raj. Um, quick question. So the 16,000 limit that you mentioned, right, um, yeah. for 529. Yeah. So let's say we put 32,000 and then the additional 3,000 that we do every year, that will mm -hmm. go through the gift tax. I'm just trying to understand the 16,000. No, it won't. 16,000 is per year. You can oh, put 32 year. every year. <laughs> oh, got it. Okay. Okay. That helps. Thanks. Yeah. So if you had signed up with Coverdell, then it's maximum 2000. So 2000. people don't like 2000. So it's like 401k versus IRA, right? So you go with a bigger amount and it's still you want to put extra 2000 in Coverdell, you can do that. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. Questions. There's some questions here. Uh, I joined live late since I, can you please, I'll send you the recording. But, you know, you guys uh, need to discuss what else. So the green card and all that, that's no eligibility. You have to be legal uh, uh, resident, meaning uh, you have to have a domicile. You have to have a home. I didn't see anywhere that you, they are asking for green card and all that. So how do we select this? All right. All right. So guys, wait for... Uh, five more minutes and uh, I want to show you which I'm going to set up a separate zoom call and um, but this is all this is now going towards your retirement so I'll show you one thing let's say your age is 40 years you're 40 years old right now you have expenses, the total expenses is broken down into things that are fixed. For example, your PI portion of mortgage, principal and interest, right? Or it could be other loan and so on. So for example, if your mortgage is say $2,000, then $1,500 is your PI. So 500 is your tax and insurance every month, right? Then your monthly expenses, remaining expenses, so it could be utilities, insurance, house tax, entertainment, food, everything. So let's say that is comes out total 3000. So this includes your house tax also, right? So now your total monthly expenses is 4,500 at the age of 40, right? You want to retire at the age of 62. So you have 22 years to grow the money. The inflation is two and a half percent. So inflation is two and a half. Every year, things are getting expensive. What things are getting expensive? This, guys, because fixed is fixed. Fixed PI will remain throughout for the same as 30 years. But the food, light bill, your internet, taxes, utilities, everything will increase at two and a half percent rate. So at 62, your 4,500 with the inflation will become the requirement will be 6,665 because of inflation. This much money you need to live today's life. At 60, you need 66K, 6,600, right? But now you may pay off your house, right? 22 years, you paid off your house, for example. So your PI portion went away, but tax and insurance still continues. So 1,500 is gone. 
So when you retire, you need 5,165, right? This is your monthly income requirement when you retire. Your kids are out of house. This is what you and your wife need every month to live the today's lifestyle, assuming that the house is paid off. So that boils down to, you got to have $2 million in your nest egg at 62. This 2 million, you withdraw only 4% from 2 million and give 25% tax to the Uncle Sam and which will boil down to 5,165. So this tells you, this is what your goal should be at 62. 62, you gotta have this much money, then only you, you can live today's lifestyle. All right. So now the next question is at 40 years age, how much money have you saved? So let's say you have saved 125,000, right? And you're pretty good investor and you're getting average 10% return. So in next 22 years, 125K will become $1 million, considering 10% growth every year, right? So now your requirement is 2 million. You have 1 million saved up. And so the deficit is, 1 million. The gap is 1 million. To fill this gap, how much you have to pay, how much you have to invest every month till 62 is $1,100. That means if you want to live today's lifestyle at 62, considering you have 125K saved in your investment account, you will still be behind. And to catch up, Every month, you're going to put $1,100 in an investment. It could be 401k, IRA, brokerage, whatever. This is what you need. See this calculator? It uses inflation and everything. So I'm going to set up another session. This can get overwhelming. Right now, you guys focus on college education. I'm going to set up another session. I want to know if there is an interest in this. I have so many things to share. The outcome of this is you will you will decide how much you need to put 401k maximum. Maybe you need to delay that brand new Tesla. Those things are needed. Otherwise, you will not be able to retire. You, will, you want to improve your quality of life in retirement. You want to travel, have a bigger house when, as you grow. And you can downgrade later on, but you know, start our home, bigger home, bigger home, and then downgrade. This will help you there. You can play around. So for example, if you're older, if you're 50, and now you're living in a super expensive house because everybody's buying expensive house, so 2500 PI, and you're enjoying. You only live twice life, right? You only live once life. This is what you need. And let's say you are, only able to knock off, say, $2,500 in your time. You need, again, you need $2 million. But now you are 50 years old, and your 125 became only 392. So the gap is 1.7 million. That means now this guy has to save $6,000 every month. He may not even know. A 50-year guy has to save six, and. He has to keep his fingers crossed that he has job till 62. This is just to invest to fill the gap. Right? So now you could be, now your kid, think this way. You need to teach your kids compounding. And that's what I teach in my group, WhatsApp group. And I'll have a separate session. So your kid come out of college. He doesn't have any payments. He's living in an apartment. Let's, uh, let's be realistic. He buys a house. A small house in his this much, and he lives very responsibly. And he's gonna work till 65. And of course, he doesn't have uh, so his requirement is this much, but he has saved fifty thousand dollars. See that? So his deficit is 748k. But he has to save only $269 every month because he's much younger. Every month he has to pay $60 to $69. Okay. Another, another calculator. 
which is which actually will help this case. So your kid is 22. He doesn't have any money saved. He just came out of college. All right. And one so every month he's putting maximum 401k, which comes out 1700. I'll put 1600. And he wants to retire at 62. At 62, he has $7 million. Let's say he wants to retire early, 60. He has $6 million. Then he doesn't do anything for five years. He doesn't invest. Becomes $9 million. $9 million at the age of 65. Because he started early, big payments. 1600 every month. Could be like this. From 22 to 40. He said, I'm going to max out my 401k for 18 years. Daddy, I'm going to max out my 401k. I'm going to do good investments, 9% average. And this is what I have. And from 40 to 65, 25 years compounding, he did nothing. He said, after 40, I'm going to stop 1600, spend for the new house or whatever. 8.8 million became 7.4 million. Of course, he's going to save in his bank account too. He's probably going to have 100,000 by the age 30. He's going to have $11 million. What, what I'm trying to say here is teach your kids to start early. And I'll have a separate session. Okay, separate session. All right, let's see someone has a question. Okay, cool. All right. All um, right. So join uh, the WhatsApp group if you guys want to. We discuss that. All right. Anything? Anything else, guys? Uh, no, Nimesh. This is a wonderful session. Thanks so much. Uh, but in case if there is any question while enrolling or anything, what what do you recommend is the best way to reach you out? So for prepaid, go to the website, research, go to, read all the frequently asked questions. If you are signing up for prepaid tuition in Texas, call them. And then you have to sign up by sub, after September 1st for the new ones can still take today's rates. For the regular 529 savings plan, call Vanguard or decide which where you want to go. Your question should be, what are the investment options? Your goal is more than 9%, right? So <laughs> you research that. I like Vanguard, Vanguard has S&P 500, growth funds, blend funds bond funds so many funds so you decide you dis you first decide which institution you want to go with then call them get the details they all know about the gift tax thing and the government has irs has declared sixteen thousand is allowed so don't invest more than sixteen thousand mm -hmm. that's it then okay. 529 doesn't have a deadline i would do it in one week you need time. You guys need time. So do it right away. Right now, the market is down too. Good time to invest. Right. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much, Mimesh. This is wonderful. And we look forward for many more sessions uh, from you like this. This is really, I would say from, from my perspective, this has been the best um, session that I have attended on financial so far. Very nice. So I look, go check the Indians in Austin group. I will set up a 401k reti retirement session and uh, please join and bring more people. You can uh, ask your friends to join too. Absolutely. Okay. absolutely. And Nimesh, one final thing. Can you share this uh, 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 PowerPoint presentation and any Excel sheet that you think is re uh, is uh, relatable to the content that we had uh, discussed so far? Yeah, my challenge is how do I share? You know, how do I give it to you guys? So that's why I'm saying... Um, Either join my WhatsApp group because I'm going to share there. Some folks are here from there. Okay. Yeah. Or, or text me and send, text me your email. I'll send it. Right. Sure. But best yeah. is best is the power presentation. Somebody needs to run through it like myself. So uh, you are well off using the recording of this. So, but I'm open. I want to help you guys. So. so uh, uh, thanks a lot, Nimesh. Uh, this is Ram here. Uh, it's a wonderful session. Uh, it's a lot of insights and uh, for planning for our kids' education. Um, so uh, is it possible to access this Zoom recording? 
I will share the Zoom recording uh, in our group, Indians in Austin. Okay. 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 I'll. I will. Uh, okay. I'll. Uh, I'll either post in the event, in the discussion, or somehow it will be a link. So I hope it records. I had recording issues, so uh, the recording is on. But just want to make yeah. sure. And we'll pick up the PowerPoint on Excel sheets from the uh, WhatsApp group if that's convenient for you. If yeah. You post it, we'll pick it up from there. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Ramesh. Wonderful. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nimesh. Appreciate yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. You're welcome, guys. Bye.